Pull it off. Pull it off. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel and to a type of video that we haven't done for a while. Since I've been working so much on the house and it's been kind of all consuming, I haven't done any DIY videos. And I've been collecting some stuff to do and specifically DIY thrift flips. I'm excited to start incorporating more DIY content into every month here on the channel. And although I haven't done very many DIY videos or thrift flip videos, I have been thrift shopping. If you haven't checked out any of my thrift shopping or flea market shopping vlogs over on my other channel, you should. If you like that style of video where I take you guys along with me shopping and then I do a haul at the end of all of the things that I got that day, you should check that out. I have another channel it's called xo mckenna vlogs so we are going to be tackling four is it five four or five three <laughs> quite a few projects i've been collecting quite a few projects today so i'm excited to get started most of these things i've never tried before so you guys are going to be along for the ride so let's see if we can do these for our first thrift flip i found this lamp look at this lamp okay just look at the shape i have no idea why someone would have oh maybe it was not cute underneath shape of it you see how it has that like that jug look and i love the wider shade that's really in style right now honestly i can't believe this lamp was five dollars but then when i realized that this was someone's very interesting craft project with i i just don't understand why they stuck all these newspaper things on here maybe it was for school. One of them says, your new best friend. And I died. I'm like, what is this? Why did someone do this? I felt like I needed to save this lamp. It has so much potential. The shade is great. It's actually more of a vintage style lamp. Like if I'm just looking at the plug and it has little bitty handles. Like it's kind of like a vessel of some sort that I love that I look for all the time. My plan for it is to make it more organic, more trend forward, like all of the different kind of organic stone, ceramic textured vase processes and techniques that we've been seeing for the last like year. I've done that technique using baking soda to add texture to paint to make it thicker and more, you know, gritty and textured, but I don't wanna do the same technique. It's more of a joint compound and mixing paint with salt, which I'm really curious to see if it's going to give more texture. So you're gonna help get all this paper off? Help me, pull it off, pull it off. <laughs> Okay, that was about all that I could get off with my hands. I could totally take some sandpaper to it, thinking it might add some texture, extra texture, and I'm all about texture. Texture, texture, texture. Since my end goal with this lamp is for it to be a darker shade, I'm gonna prime it with flat black primer. So it just helps like if there is any scratching one day down the line, at least it's going to be black on the base. And now we're gonna add even more texture with some joint compound. I've done a couple projects with joint compound actually, and it adds like some really good texture. So I'm just gonna apply it with my hands. This is already pre-mixed. Wipe it on in every which direction to give it some good texture. Well, it already looks good. Yeah, it's gonna totally work. I feel like leaving the remnants of the paper on this was like kind of whatever. Like, I don't think it's gonna give it extra texture because we're adding so much with this. I don't want it to be too thick because it's gonna take forever to dry. texture. It's been a few hours in the sun, um, so it's all dry now. These are the sample white colored paints that we've been testing out for in the exterior of the cottage. So I picked the warmer of them. I'm gonna go with a ballet white. I think it's a really pretty kind of creamy white. It's not a crazy change, but I can definitely see it in person that it's a warmer, more not so joint compound color white. 
she mixed a half a tablespoon of table salt and then a half a cup of the paint that she picked. And then she let it sit for 15 minutes so that it became like really gritty and texturized. Yep. The salt definitely makes the paint hard. I may have left it more than 15 minutes. Thicker, look at that. I mean, one, two, three, go. I just wanna kinda dry brush it, I think. I do want some of the ballet white color, the lighter color, to show through. This paint by Bear is called Dark Secret. One, I did go back over the paint with a water and mud mixture or a water and dirt mixture to make mud. It just looked too shiny because my paint was satin and I needed it to look more organic and more dull. So best thing that I had was mud from outside. I do think overall this process was so much better than just the paint and baking soda mix. I think that it's more durable with the primer and then the joint compound to add texture. And then you could simply just paint over the top of that, or you can add the salt or even do the baking soda mixture with paint on top of that. But overall, I think it's really beautiful. For our next DIY, it's all focused around wicker, rattan, cane kind of vibe. The cane rattan wicker trend has been around for a while and it was here to stay. And I think that there are so many ways that you can incorporate the look and the feeling into different styles outside of just bohemian. So I was on a mission at a thrift store to actually find really good pieces. They have lots of different baskets, some with handles, some flat, some trays. So I kind of grabbed a collection of ones that I liked that we could play with. I found a lot, and this is what I edited it down to. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. This was just, I think a wicker bowl of some kind. It would be a great planner. It would, you could even turn it over and do something to it. You could make it a pendant light. <laughs> you could do so many things with this that I just decided I have to have this. I think I can transform it in a way that looks really cool. It was five bucks first idea was I really wanted to transform glassware into having this wicker detail. That was really hard because you almost have to find the exact thing, the exact wicker thing for the exact size glass that you're gonna thrift. It's not like it's molded around it. So I got these two, obviously the handle has got to go, but I found these and I found this guy, which he looks a little bit vintage. He's real pretty i loved him i think i just i just have to really fix him right here you can absolutely clean them dunk them in like a light mild soapy warm water and then just let them dry outside and they're clean it gets all the dust off and the smell out it couldn't find actual glasses but i did find two bases all of the glassware at that thrift store was 50 percent off i just I had to try get this ugly handle off because this is not not what we're going for here all I'm gonna do, quite literally, is put some hot glue on the bottom of the glass and stick it in, let it dry. With this one, I'm gonna put it around the rim right here since it's pretty tight. How cute are these? Wait, I love them.
vintagey looking wicker pot planner. I was like, this would make a good lampshade for a small lamp because wicker can get busy. It can have a lot of texture. So I was on a mission to find something simple with a little bit of detail in the right size. Oh. Hi, pretty little lamp. This is gonna be so simple. Let's clean it up and go from there. I love the detail on the bottom. We just kind of have to fix this loose piece. So I'm just gonna put it where it naturally needs to go. And I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue, keep it in place and you'll never see it. So now it's really about making way for this little piece up here and for it to become a shade. It's pretty holy already. I'm essentially just jabbing a pair of scissors. Look, I made a hole. Let's see if the hole's big enough. Hoping, hoping, hoping. I don't think it's gonna be big enough. Oh, yes. See, it worked. I just need to figure out how to get this piece on there. I just thought of a great idea. This is a great desk lamp for me. I love her, I love her, I love her, I love her. simple, so inexpensive to flip, and I feel like they're some of my favorite things I've ever made. I love the vases. I feel like they'd make any dinner party or tablescape really beautiful for spring and summer, and the lamp is like the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's so stinking cute. So find yourself a good lamp base and a good sized wicker basket to turn into a lampshade. Another thing that I get from the thrift store all the time really, because I'm always buying things that can break. Paper, packing paper. Every time I get back from the thrift store and I put things in the closet and as I clean them, I'll pack up all of the packing paper, bags, anything that they give me, I'll bring it all back to them so that they can reuse it again. It's like, well, maybe there's another way that we can reuse and recycle, which is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. I have been wanting to find a different method or a new way to make beads on a string. I love to decorate with beads in decor, on coffee tables, on my bookshelf in LA. I think it adds such a different look. You can't really get that look with another piece of decor. So I love to lay them off of books, around vases. I've seen people make a really beautiful ones out of clay because clay is really malleable. You can roll it up into balls and maybe put like color or different things in them. I'm wondering if we can accomplish some paper mache beads on a string. Like, can that happen? I mean, you don't know until you try. And then we could also use all of the leftover scraps for our lamp. We have to shred all of this. So my parents do have a straightener. Straightener. <laughs> Shredder. I said it's straightener. I said strainer earlier. <laughs> and look at all this paper that they've already got in here that we could use. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have so much paper mache. I can make so many things. I wanna make bowls. Okay, so the paper mache recipe that I found online says place the shredded paper in a large bowl and cover with boiling water. You can probably add more paper and water as it packs down and leave to soften for about 10 minutes. Next step is blending and straining. <laughs> that we have to keep adding water just to make sure that the blender doesn't get bogged down. Some more water for now. And then, oh. <laughs> and then we just kind of push all the excess water out. The consistency we want is like damp, but crumbly. As I'm doing this, at first I was just kind of pressing the water out with a spoon. Then I grabbed it with my hands and I was getting out so much more water. So I would recommend just squeezing it with your hands. So I have all of my 
paper. And then I have white glue, white Elmer's glue. And I have joint compound. Now, caution, when you buy this from the hardware store, joint compound is so heavy. Her recipe called for eight cups of dry paper to one cup glue, one cup compound. And I'm pretty sure I did at least double that. So I'm gonna do two cups of glue and two cups of joint compound and see where that takes me. You guys are along with this experience. I do not know if this is going to work. So I'm gonna dump the joint compound. And then she says to mix it with your hands. So, oh. Definitely changing the consistency of the paper. So I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. How do you know when it's enough? How do you know when you have enough glue that it's gonna stick together and dry out? So let's try and make balls. See if it even works. Kind of flops, then we'll make a bowl. <laughs> I mean, that's cute. Is that like too big? It's still too big. That looks like a good size. Okay, let's try it out. than I thought they were going to dry. They're like 90% hard. I, I can feel a little give in it. Fingers crossed we can still string them. Thought I could use the twine as the actual cord through the strand of beads, but I think it's gonna be too thick now that they're so dry. So my mom had some just sewing thread. I just picked like a creamy white color. I'm gonna double it and then stick it through and string these already while they're still just a tad bit wet. Then try and sand them and then we can paint them. I'm gonna try a little bit of sandpaper and see if I can get some of those pokey edges off because it doesn't look great. You see those pokies? Oh yeah, it just kind of smooths it out. So far it's working. So we're gonna use like a couple of different types of paint to give it kind of a, a variety and dimension. I'm gonna use the same ballet white that we used for the underside of the lamp. And then I'm gonna see what other beiges my mom has. So my mom had some of the paint colors that she used in this house. Pretty kind of warm beige color. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, she might hate me for that, but I just poked a hole in it. Oh well. I'm gonna go back over them, but just on the surface. We don't want this complete coverage like we did before. The old me came to town And I sat beside him at a seaside bar Slipping through his hands was your photograph As he let go of everything he knew I still feel like I'm letting go of you I still feel like I'm letting go of you Cause those were the days But something was wrong I have a lot of thoughts about paper mache Paper mache is time consuming and messy And I do I think that the beads came out better than they would have if I used clay? Not really. They are way more organic. They're way more irregular. I do really like the look of them, but then I sometimes I look at it and I'm like, do I like the look of them? But then I do. I feel like the beads are a little on the large size. I think I could have made them smaller, which would have cut down dry time and maybe even played around with different colors, like a darker version or a more brown tone, just to add more differentiation. I think they're really textural and really organic, which I really like for bookshelves or coffee tables. So I hope you guys enjoyed this thrift flip video and I hope it inspires you to go thrift shopping and look at things that you're finding and things on the shelf and maybe
maybe a little bit of a different way and what you can transform them into. And of course, share your projects with me on Instagram at exo McKenna. I also have an entire playlist of all different thrift flips that I've done here on my channel. So you guys can check that out. And if you have missed any of the renovation videos on our 110 year old cottage here in Texas, you can catch up on that too. And of course we have tons more videos coming soon. So if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload every Sunday here and every Tuesday over on my vlog channel for more behind the scenes content. And we, oh, she's asleep. You can tell them we're gonna see them next week. Oh, you're so sweet, Kinsley. Bye guys. I was like, what the heck is this? And I was like, it literally holds her hot glue and then it falls on that little glass piece. I was like, wait, that's so clever. Did she make that? What I should have worried about is the possibility of credit card shreds in the shredder. I have been picking out forever. <laughs>